Whether it's the level of explicit content or the disgusting obscene behavior, this man showed us how low humans can really get. While several morons finished their sentence and left, what happened to this man here turned him into a legend. Yep, you heard that right. Because there is nobody in this world as degenerate and crass as John Michael Dupee. For his obnoxious behavior, Dupee, as he is famously or rather infamously known, was sentenced to a long and tiring four years in prison. Uh, well, correction. The judge actually made it eight years after a second hearing. Now, why do you think the judge changed his mind after settling on a specific time? What could have happened between those two hearings, or rather, during those hearings that could have led to this drastic change of judgment? I mean, punishments are handed down for a reason, and Dupee couldn't care less about being thrown behind bars. However, karma had its own way to strike back at him, and since this worldly punishment brought no difference in him whatsoever, Destiny decided to take away the two most precious things Dupee had in his life. What's more, he lost both of them on the same day, at the same moment. Gosh, that must have truly been hard. As they say, when nothing else can hit you, grief can. Which is exactly what happened in the case of John Dupee. But how did he land himself in this misery? For that, I'll have to take you back to the second episode of Season 1, when Chris was back in Fairfield, Connecticut, to do what he does best, interrogating some really vile men who've lost their sense of humanity. This is the same sting that caught the likes of Jeff Sokol, Michael Gentile, and Stephen Buchanan. Now, this must give you a fair idea of the kind of weirdos who resided in this community. Well, each and every one of them were extreme in their own way, and Dupee was no different. At the time, Chris was still reeling high high in the success of the original show, and since he realized there were more morons out there in the open, he came back with a bang to do just the same thing in a spinoff all over again. Well, I'm glad he did, for we'd never be able to net this notorious fish from an ocean of creepos in the world. Chris was all buckled up and ready to catch some of the most horrible men to ever exist. But little did he know that the man they were about to catch would put the 200 odd men previously caught to shame. If you think I'm exaggerating, then wait till you hear this. Now, this dude sounds like he's on fire. I mean, that drag that he had in his voice somehow paints this crazy picture of him where I can see him seated in the dark, somewhere alone, almost trying to smother the hell out of the phone. Now, imagine what this idiot can do if he's able to get his hands on the bait. I don't even want to think about it. But here comes something that's even more alarming than his voice. Dupee, a former package handler, who was 40 years old at the time, was in touch with not one, but two setups at the same time. Looks like this dude was trying his luck everywhere around. Now, I'm not sure how many more people he was in contact with, but landing two baits from the same watchdog team is truly chilling. It shows how jobless, like literally jobless this Dirk was, which is why the crew was all set to receive their worst nightmare. All the cameras were set, the cops were in position, Chris gave the go-ahead, and the setup? She was totally ready to invite the devil himself. But you have to give it to this team. I mean, knowing the intensity of the chats that have been exchanged, it's crazy how every other day, the entire team prepares themselves to meet their next challenge. As for Dupee, he went with several screen names and did not even disclose a particular age. Sometimes he was John Santoro, and on other times, he was Johnny Connecticut. It wasn't until much later that his true identity was revealed. But how does it even matter? Because this dude wanted to be called Boo. Cut to the rainy night, which I have to say made things all the more dramatic. One of the setup's phones buzzed, and everyone went silent. Two rings later, when she finally picked up the call, this is what happened. Hello. Hey, Boo. Where are you? I'm not sad. It was that same eerie voice once again, and this time, he sounded intent on having his way. But on a lighter note, do you know what this reminds me of? The movie Scream. Now, if you aren't a movie buff like me, then let me give you a quick glimpse into the most terrifying scene from the movie. I'm in the house. <laughs> do you know where I am? Remember this? Damn, that was hands down the most iconic dialogue for the entire series, you can say. As for Dupee, that subdued voice with that seductive drag that he forces into his speech, well, I get the same ghost face kind of vibe from Dupee. The only difference being, that was fictional, and this was bloody real. So you see how Dupee turns out to be way more dangerous than any fictional villain you've ever seen? This man has left quite an impression on Chris, as well as the audiences, skyrocketing his negative fame to new heights. Well, thankfully, the local police department was involved, and the crew had a pretty good reason to invite this guy into the house. 
Dupee had started to converse with the setup just a few days earlier to showing up at the house somewhere around September of 2016. And actually, the setup didn't even have to lure him because this jerk, like a sucker, immediately fell for it. He was so desperate that he couldn't even figure she was trying to lure him in. Soon enough, it doesn't take too long for Dupee to get comfortable with Bailey and reveal all of his inner instincts. Dupee was such a stinker that he was willing to go to any length just to bring his fantasies to life. During the chats, apart from all the boo and baby conversations, Dupee got into the nitty-gritty details of how he would want to do some really crazy things with her. And yes, they were in such explicit detail that I can't even show it to you here. It's safe to say that this man had absolutely no control over his inner inhibitions, and casually spoke to the setup like she was his girlfriend for years. But I can't understand how he thought he could pass off as a 30-year-old. <sighs> There's absolutely no way. One of the viewers kind of mirrored my thoughts when he said, dude claims that he's 30 when he's actually 40, but looks 80. Well, precisely so, because we seriously can't deny that Dupee does look much older than he's supposed to. Anyway, coming back to the day of the sting. So this jerk decided to show up pretty late into the night, and you can see how he made his way to the door at a slug's pace. And well, just like any other weirdo who shows up at the door, this one too wasn't empty-handed. Presents. What do you got? Dupee had brought with him a bag of goodies, which was carefully chosen to suit the age of the person he was dealing with. Now, watch this next clip really close. Show me. Did you notice something? Well, of course, apart from the jerk walking up to the table, did you see how the setup kept backing up the more the prick inched towards her? That just about shows how petrified she was of him. I mean, no stage actor or whatever it is can mask their feelings because this one was truly frightening. It's always better to keep a safe distance, which is something that came naturally to the setup. Meanwhile, this dude was reeling with happiness. I mean, just take a look at him presenting all of his beautiful presents to her. What kind is it? That smile you see right there, it looked like the man had achieved something huge in his life. One of the viewers even mentioned how his behavior mimicked how people would act with really little ones. This man definitely deserves no sympathy. He has absolutely no remorse for his actions and would have gotten away with it were it not for the crew and the sting. He first checks with the setup if she was nervous, and when she said that she was, he tried to make her feel better by saying that this was his first rodeo. Like, as if. For a man with several fake IDs online, no way was this his first rodeo. Dupee was surely a man who was experienced in this field and clearly knew what he was doing. Only this time, there was no way out for him. And just when the setup asked him what he was planning on doing, this hound of a guy almost pounced on her for a hug. But guess what? Chris was already behind the closed doors, waiting to pounce on this horrible monster. Hey, dude. Hey. Okay, so you saw how things escalated out there. In one second, he was like two feet away, and in the very next, he was almost on her. But did you miss something in the midst of it? Okay, let me just play that clip again, right here. Hey, dude. Hey. Did you hear it now? Well, this is what makes Chris who he is. I mean, I've seen Chris regularly mock these weirdos while confronting them, but this particular one was just gold. I'm sure even Dupee was shocked to hear a six-foot-tall gentleman call him Boo. This is exactly why you rock, and this is exactly why you have so many fans. Heading back to the big confrontation, Dupee blatantly lied about his age to Chris and even had the audacity to tell them that he was indeed here to meet the setup. What's more, he even said that the two had hit it off as friends and that he only wanted to talk to the girl. Looks like Dupee hadn't caught wind of what was happening and assumed that Chris was a relative of the girl or something on those lines, and he even gave a good reason to explain his presence. When Chris threw a trick question at him, this jerk didn't take a second to think. Watch football. Yeah. Who's playing tonight? Steelers and Ravens. Well, it looks like this man was truly here with a set plan. But Chris seems to be one step ahead, because Dupee may have a ton of excuses. But Chris had pages and pages of the chat logs. How about that, you prick? How are you going to escape now? But despite every question that Chris fired at him, Dupee had just one standard answer to give. To hang out, get to know her, you know? Get to know her. Yeah. But dude, there's no point in lying. You're going to be charged anyway, so shut up already. As the grilling continued, this moron was seriously facing the heat, and you just have to look at him to see that. This man broke into a sweat like he was doing some major cardio routine. Dupee then claimed that he wasn't necessarily a bad guy and was caught in this situation due to some bad decisions. It was definitely a bad decision, Dupee. One of the viewers even mentioned how everything about this weirdo screamed out trouble, right from his manners to his teeth to his chat and to his speech. 
just about everything. And even the god-awful hairstyle of his is downright creepo material, and I cannot agree more. But once Chris had gotten enough material out of him, it was time to reveal that Dupee would now be a TV star, just not for the right reasons. The moron finally understood the situation, and he immediately picked his things up and headed for the garage to make a quick escape. But once there, this is what happened. <laughs> What followed was a total breakdown. I don't know if he was just putting up a show or whether he really felt like crap, but Dupee could not stop sobbing right through the investigation. Right from the time he signed away his right to remain silent to even having his mugshot taken, Dupee turned himself into a mess. And it's not like he admitted his mistake during the interrogation. After all that crying, Dupee continued to lie his way out of the situation. I really wasn't. Well, then help us understand this. Her to feel you inside her. But there was so much evidence against him that he just had to confess and surrender. And what was his final excuse for showing up? He said it was because he was single and lonely. He also added that he hadn't hit it off with anyone in so long that he was forced to take such measures to not feel lonely anymore. What that means to me. <laughs> I know, I should never said no like that. But that's when he reveals another little dirty secret. Dupee at the time out on bail for another prior offense, and considering he had committed something as heinous as this, takes it for granted that he's not going to see the outside world for a long time to come. And going by his frowned up face full of worry, I think he knew it too. As for the cops who interrogated him, they were well aware that this guy was just spinning lies, and one of them even described the entire situation as plain BS. Thereafter, it wasn't hard to charge Dupee. The stinker was charged with three counts of felony and was found guilty of all three. Yep, that's my man for you. He made sure he ticked every last one of them off. Initially, Dupee was looking at around four years of jail time, but due to some hindrances at the court, he was unable to appear at court on the initial date. Apparently, these hindrances were the other defaulters in the courtroom, who were waiting for their turn. These offenders stirred up a huge commotion in the courtroom by verbally trying to attack Dupee. The session had to be called off to prevent any further altercation. However, Dupee's day finally came when he received a whopping eight years in prison with a 10-year probation charge. He was also registered as an offender for these 10 years. Despite all the charges, Dupee showed no remorse or guilt. But that's when something terrible happened. Remember from earlier when I told you about Dupee losing two of his most precious beings? Well, this dude's story is suddenly gonna turn sour. While the man was still serving his time behind bars, he received very tragic news. His siblings, brother Brandon Dupee and sister Dupee, tragically died in a freak accident. Reports suggested that Brandon was found driving under the influence in 2016 and had his license revoked due to this case. He was even arrested before being let go. Despite this, less than an hour later, Brandon once again took the helm of the car, with his 31-year-old sister Lindsay Dupee as a passenger, and swerved off the road, killing both of them in the process and leaving Johnny Boy behind to rot in jail alone. What makes this even more disturbing is that Lindsay only came to help Brandon. She came to free him by posting for his bond of $500. And what did he do? Drove her to her death after slamming his Honda Accord to a nearby tree. I mean, just check this out. There's no way anyone could survive that. I really feel bad for this sister right here. All she was doing was just trying to help her brothers. Well, don't forget that she was the one who dropped John to the sting house as well, although it's a different story, that she didn't know who he was coming to meet. I kind of feel these two brothers were just taking advantage of a loving sister. Things had drastically taken a turn for the worse for the Dupee family, and several viewers spoke about Dupee's mother. I mean, the kind of things she had to go through, losing one son to law and order and the other two in the hands of fate. That's just crushing. I tried looking for her, but this is all I could find. I hope she finds the peace she deserves wherever she is. But two years later, Dupee was finally released in 2018, following which he ended up homeless. In one of the forums, I found a discussion that said Dupee lived with an organization briefly as soon as he got out of prison. He later got his own apartment and probably even a temporary job. But since he couldn't hold on to the job for long, he lost the house as well and was back to living in a shelter in Connecticut, which is where he was apparently last seen. Someone even posted a picture of what might be the recovery house he was at. However, I cannot confirm this yet. However, I don't think he snapped out of his ways. Sometime later, Dupee was once again arrested for breaking the terms of his probation related to an illicit substance charge. Dupee remained imprisoned until June of 2022 and was released on bail in September 2022, but it looks like he's now out there somewhere. I found this one Reddit user who claimed that he'd seen Dupee out and about in the neighborhood. For those of you who already know about Dupee, you must be wondering why I left out another very important aspect of his life out of this update today. I'm talking about his only child, a son, who Dupee claimed was 10 at the time of the sting. 
Well, it's just out of sympathy that I don't want this person to be brought back into the picture of his rather dreadful past. I can't imagine what he's been through, but I can only hope he has a better future than his dad. You see how Dupuis' obsession caused his entire life to crumble right in front of him? Looks like this was his destiny for committing a heinous act of sin, but who knows? There may be more weirdos out there who might walk up to the Stinghouse unalarmed in the future.